Good morning or afternoon or evening or in the middle of the night, depending where you're watching this. Uh, this is Chuck here working on the track vehicle project. And I'm going to dedicate a video here to the um, rear bogey or the rear take-up bogey, rear wheel, whatever you want to call it, the adjuster that slides out. Obviously, if you do a track vehicle of any kind, you got to allow for the track to be tensioned, and um, this is what we have done. I'm going to start with my old vehicle here and show you the little bit of difference I've made. Nothing real stupendous. I used, a, and this is a one inch frame, three quarter inch slider, piece of angle iron, shaft collar with a lock on it, welded. This is a piece of round tubing and two half inch nuts. I screwed them on the six inch bolt and then slid them in and just tacked them on each side. I actually ended up welding them pretty good. I have two nuts there and this is the way I ran this thing. Tighten it up, slider comes out and it was just fine most of the time. I've had a little bit of issue with the thing starting to tighten up but it worked pretty good. So I was going to do that the same way and I started uh, another series of those. I need four of them and there was one of them I did. But I found something uh, this time whenever I did it for whatever reason and you guys that know metallurgy better than I do this thing would turn nice and free inside the nuts and the nuts were stationary of course but after I tacked things around and welded it then it would no longer turn freely. So I don't know if I heated and expanded the threads on the, the bolt or if something changed in the nuts or whatever, who knows. But um, the only thing I hate doing something more than once or twice is doing it three times. So there's one there, there's one there, and then I ran out of my round tubing, so I thought I'll use some square. So I did the thing with a square about three times, did the same thing. They were turning nice and free, and as soon as I... As soon as everything cooled down and I tried to turn it, they were just, I couldn't hardly do it with a air, my air impact. It was just crazy. But, in my, uh, you know, like I said last time, my daddy told me, learn from other people's mistakes because you don't got time to learn on your own. I did end up getting two of them done that turned nice. That's what baffled me. I can't figure out how come I got two that worked good and then the next six in a row were goofy. But here they are on my new track vehicle. Of course, this is a quarter inch and a quarter tubing. Now we're at one inch. There's the flat stock quarter inch. I did that so I could get a socket underneath here. That's the reason I put them up on a quarter inch piece because I always had a hard time on the other one getting a socket on here. You know, I use the air impact or whatever to because it takes forever otherwise. So that's why it's a quarter inch. These two are nice. They work great. And then I did like six in a row that didn't work. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Piece of angle iron, it's just tacked on here for now. Of course, I'll really put the heat to that. This is a 9 16 inch um, shaft. And something I had left over from another project, so it fits right in the collars, great. Weld them on and we're good to go, right? But, I'll give you one more thought here. Another option. If you have the problem I did, this is what I came up with when I thought about it later. Instead of actually welding the nuts to it, like I did before, tried to, and, and risk expanding, contracting, whatever, messing up the threads, I took two nuts, and I made them to be able to stay there, but I took the same inch and a quarter piece of square tubing, same quarter inch flat stock, but I put a washer on the back of here. If you can picture it now, when you turn this thing, the nuts will stay put. Two of them just for extra strength. They're about a quarter inch apart or so. They won't touch. But it, it's, they turn absolutely free and wonderfully. And um, I didn't have to risk heating up the metal or messing the threads up or whatever I did wrong on the other four. And I really like this. There's another advantage to it because if you want to change them later, you just pop them out, take the nuts off. You have to do a little bit of grinding on there for them to fit in there. And then they just fit back in there. And they're good to go. 
and we'll get in there. So anyway, that's the that's the latest and greatest. It was a good idea, I thought, and uh, it saved me having a, a lot of frustration with it. Other thing, just so you know, this is upside down now. I have made the decision and committed myself to uh, flipping the frame like I mentioned in my last video. And uh, the only problem I had, if you recall the last video, if you followed me, if you're subscribed, is there's a little bit of corner here on the frame that was hitting. So I went ahead and cut that down, cut it right out with my little cutting tool, put a quarter inch piece of flat stock in and welded it inside and welded it along the top. Also capped it off with another quarter inch piece so it's really good and strong. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And I put a shorter bolt. It worked out just excellent. And of course I had to do the, the, the four of them. One, two, three, four. So I got all four of those things done. And I really like the way the track sits and goes over it. Plus I really like the space underneath now that I have to work this torsion system which has arms on it which is unlike this track vehicle which just is on a solid rail. This is good. You can build it this way. I'll show you when we get to doing the torsion system again. You can build it this way if you're you know just want to bomb around and, and, and make it work and make it cool. I've put a lot of miles on that thing like that. But I wanted something a little different. Always trying to improve. What I did this time is Rather than commit myself to welding a bunch of stuff to the frame, and uh, if I didn't like it or didn't want to change bogey wheels or whatever, instead I've taken some some uh, eighth inch, inch and a half angle iron, and I've made a frame to set within the track frame. Say, Chuck, what's that going to do? Well, what that's going to do, isn't it cool? I'll put my little arrow up there. My little L for left hand side. <laughs> What's that going to do? I'm going to build everything off of this frame. I'm going to have my braces in here. I'm going to have my, my torsion arms come up. I have my bogey wheels on it. And that way, if I want to change something or take something apart or disassemble something that I don't like or want to change, all I do is loosen the, loosen the uh, slider, pull it in, pull the track off. Again, this is upside down if you can picture it. And I pull this whole framework out. I pull the whole framework out, and then uh, I could change the whole system, change the bogies, whatever. Easily slide it back in the vehicle, put it down. We'll either bolt it or we'll maybe even just pin it. It doesn't really matter. It's a really nice tolerances in there, and we'll build the system off that. That might be a little premature, but uh, just thought I'd show that to you as long as I'm trying to catch you up on the slider of the bogies. So I hope that helps if you're building alongside me. I know I didn't give you any measurements today, but I gave you measurements last time. And we'll work on that and, uh, and try to get some more information to you as we go. Thanks for all your comments, your subscribers. Uh, thanks for following along with me. This is uh, Michigan. We finally got some weather. Got my door open. And uh, I just want to say God bless to you all. Hope you're having a, having a good day and good success on your projects. God bless you guys.